Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a brand new video of Bleach Mobile 3D. Now, I wanted to go ahead and cover this game again because I played this game back uh, a couple months ago, mostly during like the earlier parts of this year up until like midsummer, um, and really, really enjoyed it. But the difficulty I found is the game does kind of repeat itself over and over. However, coming up soon, we do have a full English release coming out worldwide for this game finally. So I currently play on the C version, meaning that it is quite far ahead. Um, basically, the way this game ends up working, if you haven't seen it before, is they'll drop banners pretty much like once a week or once every couple of weeks to try and actually get it out. Um, it's a very fragment-based system, so for example, uh, this right here. So this is Don Guy Ichigo. You would get him off of pulling up until 160 on the boxes to get guaranteed fragments to be able to get a copy of him fully. So it's a very slow progression game. Um, it's made in tandem alongside Bleach Mobile or uh, Bleach Brave Souls, and so a lot of the art you'll find is very similar to it. And it's going to be coming out worldwide sometime soon. Uh, the C version actually has actually been updating quite a bit since I last played. So today, what I wanted to go ahead and do is cover a little bit more on the game, cover the new stuff they added, as well as kind of my thoughts on the general thing. Because if the game is coming out worldwide sometime soon. I think it's going to be curious to see how it ends up being covered, because... So for C, we've had roughly about, like, almost a full year at this point to, to wait on releases. So we've gotten characters that have come out very, very slowly, but a hell of a lot of them as it comes out. So there actually is, like, a full list of the schedule for the different characters, but today we're just going to go through everyone that is available right now. Um, now, naturally... The characters I play as the most is like Vestal Lord Ichigo, uh, the Sukiora, Don Guy. I've been playing very much recently. Um, honestly, I've kind of neglected the game a lot recently just because I haven't really felt that hype around it. But they added new characters like the Parasol units. Um, the swimsuit units also have like full models now. Like you know how in Bleach Brave Souls, for example, when you would see the the swimwear characters in general, they would be like the chibis, and it'd be kind of weird, and it'd be like, yeah, okay. I see what you're doing. It's kind of strange, but I'm down. Um, here is the actual full models, and they have like a Nemu. They have the uh, the Halebel or a Neliel here. They have the Uruu. They added this in the meantime when, since I last played as well. Uh, it's the white Ichigo with like the really cool mask. He honestly seems super super rad. I want to try out a trial of him on recording at some point, because like these characters like this are characters that are harder to get quite a bit, because, like, so, Base Lord Ichigo, um, the shirtless Yama, and one other character, I believe, I think it's Stark, and then this character as well, are characters that you can only get off of spending a hell of a lot of your pulls, um, which is kind of rough, but let's go ahead and see this. So his first is a jump forward and a slam, his second is a slash round in a bunch of areas, his third is a big shoot with his horn that also adds a forbid debuff. Interesting. His assist is the same as his third, so that's quite interesting. He has a lot of buffs, actually. He has, like, shields and attack boosts as well. That's nice. His awakening is... He gets put on spin cycle, and he poses. I see. So his second becomes a ball. His first becomes a big thing from the sky. His third is still a Cero, and it's basically the same thing as it was before. Even so, these cooldowns are so fast, it's honestly like... You could probably spam him quite, quite a bit. I feel like he's not as good as some of the other characters, though. Interesting. He's super cool looking, though. Uh, what else did they add? They added a new swimwear Ichigo with a watermelon? They have a parasol now. Um, this swimsuit... Uh, or he might try to spend on him and end up not getting. So this Stark is one of the ones you have to actually spend like a bunch on to be able to get. Um, which dropped recently when I last played. We have this Rangiku, which is swimwear. We have the Arant Kargin, which I actually really wanted to get at one point. Um, he came out since the last time I played as well. And he's actually super, super good. He's honestly one of the best characters in the game right now. His first is a big stab forward. His second is a spin in the cycle and another spin there. Third is one big stab. Assist is the one big stab. And his cooldowns are actually quite fast here. His awakening supposedly should be Bonkai, which is just a pose. I see. 
His first, stabs from the ground. Second, stabs from the sky. And third is a big lifesteal stab, of which inflicts a pretty scary debuff on him. Alrighty. He's actually, you see him super, super good. In terms of like combos, his Nat actually picks them up pretty well as well. Typically inside this game, what you're trying to look for is characters that pick up enemies and keep them stunned and inflict certain things on them. Uh, Lifesteal is a really big part of it as well, so super, super good. And a power armored Yor uh, Yorihime. Orihime. Let's go ahead and check this out. Now, these characters are super late game, but these are kind of examples of what you'll see in the tail ends of what you're playing. So, like, one of the first characters that comes out is going to be Dongaiichigo. And then it goes, like, Dongaiichigo, um, a bunch of Arankars, like, a, a full Bonkai Toshiro, and so on. Up until these characters, which are, like, the latest ones, of which are, like, crazy. So, big punches, big slam, big ball from the sky. Her... Her actual assist is just her first. Alright. Her awakening is the big punch and she goes into like the Shunko form. Alrighty. Her first becomes a slap and a stun. Her second is a lot of punches. And then she becomes a ball wielder whenever she uses her third as well. Not too bad. Her kit actually looks like it's super, super crazy. And she stacks a lot of attack buffs to be able to do pretty well. I will take that. I actually want to get her at some point. The thing is, because the global version is coming out officially, I'm, I might end up swapping over there, honestly. Like, while I do enjoy this account and everything, and like everything I'm doing here, I'm kind of happy with kind of leaving this behind and going to play with my friends. Because like, a big part of what I enjoy is being able to play with like co-op, and this game is very co-op heavy. To the point where like, typically you'll be creating a team and going into a lot of the gameplay segments, so like, mod plan, um, dojo, invading, defending Serate, and midnight soul hunt. All of these are different game modes to get different items per day. And all of them you have to play co-op. You can play it alone, but it's like very slow. You typically want to make sure you do your co-op with everybody. So like, if you have a good squad together that you end up playing together with, um, it's super fun. And actually the Treasure Cavern is the one that isn't co-op, but it's even, it's fine. The game is honestly, it's very grind heavy because every one of the characters has a bunch of different like parts that they end up having to get upgraded. So like, level, um, uh, regular upgrades, so like gray to green to blue to purple to red uh, or to, to gold to red uh, and then to like super gold or it's like orange. So it goes gray, green, blue, uh, purple, uh, orange, red, gold. So it's a hell of a lot of tiers to go ahead and work through. You can see here, my Retsu here is almost up to the red, which costs a lot. So um, this eyes has been upgraded already, and this Ukiora, if I was level 120, I could actually get him up to, uh, gold as well. Which is super, super exciting. Um, very interesting stuff there. But if we go ahead and check this out, I actually want to check out two more characters. I saw here, or actually, just one more. I saw four fusion Sosuke Aizen here. I want to go ahead and check out his kit. Because so I haven't actually tried him out just yet. I think he's also available from... The exchange things, we'll check that out in a second. His first, inside this really cool form by the way. Honestly, I I find BBS doesn't really give a lot of like justice to the characters that are super cool inside Bleach. So this is actually really neat. So his first gives him a shield and also just does a bunch of damage. His second is a ball explosion. His third is a seal and anti-defense ability that also just kind of screams up to the air. Oh, he seems stupid broken. His awakening is... Him getting the shakes. <gasps> Does he go into the... Oh my god, he actually goes into the cool, cool form. Look at that. Hell yeah. His first is a big shield thing. His second is like a drill. His third is another pose with the eyes. And his actual nat is just like a general pickup right here. This is super cool. I want him really bad. Dude, that's super hype. I like it a lot. So what does that actually give him? Reflection. When you receive a debuff, the enemy caster will receive the same debuff. That's ridiculous. Because inside this game, there's a lot of people that like stack debuffs and give like lifesteal and stuff like that, or like stun the enemies. That's a straight like, oh, I'm stunned. You're stunned type of thing. I like it. This is so cool though. I don't know why he gets like the shakes. I don't know why he had like seven coffees this morning, but hell yeah. So we'll do that. Pop that off. 
Big explosion. I love it. Okay, yeah. I want to get him. That's definitely super, super cool. You actually see him in the tutorial when you fight as Don Guy, but you don't actually get the chance to play as him. I like it. So this is typically what you'll see inside the end game of the game. Like a lot of the later characters are dropped like this. We go ahead and head into events here and go and check out the character exchange. You can see here. So all of these more rare characters are available via different means. Um, you get these gems. So it won't be when the first when the game first comes out up until like the first. I want to say it dropped around. I want to say like the resurrection Segunda Etapa Ukiora's banner. Roughly around when this guy came out, they added Vase to Lord Ichigo and also added this like exchange gem system. Of which is basically, when you do pulls, you'll get pulls of these items right here, the exchange gems. And you can put those towards certain characters. The characters that are available so far are the shirtless Yamamoto, which is a fantastic character. Vase to Lord Ichigo, which is good, but not the best out of all of them. Um, Stark, which is super good. Uh, the fourth fusion Aizen, which is exactly what we just, we just played as, and he's super, super cool. And finally, the uh, masked white Ichigo. So typically, you'll have to decide between these different characters, and it, the order that it comes out in is it'll be first, Bastel Lord, second, uh, Shirtless Yama, third, the Stark, fourth, the uh, Ma or I think it's fourth, the Aizen. And then fifth would be the masked uh, white Ichigo. So all super, super good. But those characters are rarer because it takes a lot to exchange for those. Because you can see you exchange 20 gems, which is two pulls of the gems, for the sake of getting um, one shard of the character. And additionally, this white Ichigo, you have to use five universal fragments with as well. So super expensive. Um, you have to get that 50 times to be able to get a character inside this game as well. So, if you want to get this 4th Fusion Aizen, you're going to need a hell of a lot. Hell, what is... What is 5 times 50? You would need 250 of those mod sprays, pretty much, to be able to get this Aizen, even if you had the exchange gems for it. So, very, very expensive stuff right there. But what I want to go ahead and do here... I was going to go and do some of the dailies here. I want to show off an example of kind of what the game's all about. Because uh, I do want to say that I'll be starting up the actual global version that comes out officially and kind of seeing how it goes from there. Um, I honestly do really enjoy this game. My issue just kind of turned into everyone that I was playing with kind of stopped for the moment, so I took a step back. But on top of that, it's also just the game is very slow progress. So like, you're grinding up all of your EXP to get them up to level 117, which is what I'm currently at right now, or whatever level you're at currently. You're trying to get their stars upgraded. You're trying to get like universal fragments. You're trying to get talents. You're trying to get the soul mods. You're trying to get the Hogyokus. You're trying to get the skills. So it's a game that very much, if you want to focus on one character, it's a game that lets you do that quite a bit. Um, it's basically very heavy in terms of you want to get a really good party to be able to compete officially in the end game segments. So like, you want to get your Vase to Lord Ichigo and Shirtless Syama and uh, Aizen all together for a three-person team to be able to do some good work there. Here you can see, I'm playing as Halo Bell. She's, she's the last one I actually like pulled for and locked here. Um, and she's super fun. Only issue is we're waiting right now for the spawns. So this is one of the game modes you'll be doing on, on your like typical dailies inside a game like this. Uh, it's just... You can easily auto this, no matter who you are. It's very, very easy. Um, basically, just kill all of these as fast as you can and get the EXP per day to be able to level up faster and faster. Typically, this game mode is good if you're trying to get your level increased to be able to go and get certain upgrades. But the issue is if you do it every single day, um, you'll run into the issue where you're over leveled and your actual party doesn't quite, like, sync up with it very well. Because that's a big issue, is that... You typically want to be in the same like level range as the characters that you're using, so we don't actually like top up a lot and don't do a lot of like fast upgrades. Sometimes you'll be skipping this game mode um, on your dailies to be able to try and stay at like level 110 without trying to go to to 120, for example. It's very interesting in that way. This is honestly one of the closest things to a like a. I would say an anime MMO, as you can get right now. Like, naturally, there's games like Arc Age. There's games like, uh, 
Digimon Masters Online and stuff like that. But this game is literally collect characters in Bleach and do MMO style grinding to be able to do your dailies and kind of get that done. So I do like it a lot. It lets me have fun with like the slow grind in each day. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's one of the interesting ones and that's good to go. Uh, at wave 5, I believe, or wave 6, I believe a Mayuri will spawn as well, so we gotta go and kill him. Yeah, typically this will be a lot of the rotations you do. Just kind of like running around, having a good time. Here we go. Break that. And... Whoop, whoop, whoop. Now, people were asking about this last time I played this game as well. This game is on mobile, so this is going to be a game that you can bring around with you and kind of do your dailies on a bus. Like, typically, for me personally, a lot of what I do is whenever I'm transiting to certain places, I'll be playing these games on the side and kind of doing my grinds for that. It will take up your data quite a bit. I did run into that issue, personally. Um, just gotta, just gotta be careful around that, really, but it's very easy to pick up and play and do, like, a couple minutes of grinding each day. Typically, the dailies that you do will take roughly about like an hour and a half per day, so that is way to keep in mind for the most part. Because like, you can see there, that took us roughly about like five or so minutes to go ahead and get done. Um, and you have to do all of those to be able to get this done. So naturally, I've grinded up some stuff so far today. Um, but the stuff I've grinded so far, I've only gotten 70 of the dailies. Uh, it is actually, it takes a lot. There's a lot of different things you have to do to be able to get your dailies done. Um, it's it's a heavier investment, I'd say. But once you get to the end game, a lot of the time you can just kind of go into these, go into like the hardest version, and then just sweep past some of these. So like, sweep this, sweep this. Now you have to do it one by one inside this game mode, weirdly enough. But if you go ahead and sweep and get this done here, you're gonna be able to get free fragments of like Bonkai Gin, for example, each day. Go ahead and grab those. Free diamonds as well. And we'll take that for the moment as well. Now, this game, you can't pull full pulls of characters. So typically, if you were to be going in on a banner, like for example, uh, that Dongai Ichigo I showed off earlier, right here, um, you would have to go to 160 pulls in total to be able to get it. Meaning you would need 160 tickets, of which each ticket is 168. So let's go ahead and do some... Some real quick maths. You ready for this? Wah. Okay, so 168 times 160. That is not the button I want to press. Am I double clicking right now? My bad. Uh, times uh 160. See, so we need a total. That is not the number. That is definitely not the number. 168. Uh, my my brain is farting right now. One sec. Uh, it would be 160 times... No, that's way too much, though. That wouldn't be how that works. Fuck. How do you math? My brain is, like, screaming right now. Uh, you wouldn't need... Okay, what, I'll just do this. So you need 26,880 gems in total. Which, honestly, if I'm being honest, with the way that you grind this game and what you're doing... Um, it's not that bad to get that. Typically, you won't be using a lot of your gems to get those. Um, they have stuff like this online reward, where every single time you hit the 20 for this, which is basically, every time you stay logged in for 20 minutes, you get one pull of this, and every, every time you hit 20, you get five of these recruitment coupons. So, if you play the game often, if you grind up the game often, if you hop on and do it actively, if you play the game modes, for example, you'll get a lot of tickets in your dailies. Typically, you'll be able to get like one character per month or so if you do a lot of grinding. Um, so it's not that bad, even if you don't want to top up. And there's also events that come around such as it's called like the Kukaku Lottery, where you would put in gems like you toss in 300, you get 500 back. You put in 800, you get 1200 back and so on up to like 10,000. But you need VIP levels to be able to get that. So VIP level 8 can do up to like 11,000 and get a bunch back as well. Um, so it's not that bad. But naturally, this game does require you to do a lot of grinding to be able to do your dailies and be part of it. 
it's asking a lot of you to be able to pop on and constantly grind that stuff out. So, if it's a game that you personally want to get invested in, uh, it's definitely worth trying to pick up. So, I would say this game, if you're someone that's into kind of having a game that you can focus on and be able to like play actively and get good inside because of that, it's definitely one of the ones that's better for that. Also, that's just a, just a pile of names. Lots a lot of rainbows. Jeez. Um, and they also have certain, like, challenges that pop up during certain times during the day. So, like, you can see right now, Peak Duel and Minos Grande Hunt are on. Peak Duel is, like, a drafting game mode where you would draft certain characters. Not personally the characters that you've grinded up so far. But if you... Let's, let's actually... I'm gonna show it off. Because there's actually a lot of different game modes inside this. Please leave your team first. Oh, right. I was... I was inside that. Whoopsie. Go ahead and leave that real quick. Um... Typically, there's a lot of different things that come around. So there's like a competitive game mode, there's a kill-based battle royale, there's um, a boss fight game mode. So there's a lot of stuff you can actually go get done. And here, I want that Vestal Lord. Um, basically this game mode, he took it. God damn it. Um, this game mode, you draft up two characters at a time. Or like the first person gets one, second person gets two, and so on all the way down to the end here. I actually think I want these two. I like um, Captain Urahara a lot, so I actually want to use him. I also want the shirtless Yama here as well. But typically, every character inside the game is available inside here, so you'll be using this game mode to be able to grind out stuff pretty easily. I want to use... You know what? I want to do this. I'm happy with that, because Halo Bell's pretty alright, um, and I like, uh, like Toshiro a lot. I don't know about the Paracel now, but we'll deal with it. I'm going to take these guys. I'm going to take Yami as well, because I think he is one of the newer ones. I'm going to take Nui Tora. I feel like I might have wanted to grab Shinji. He's probably going to grab him now. Um, it's not a huge, huge deal. Oh, he didn't actually grab Shinji? Oh, that was a mistake. Shinji's great. And also, the Rukia is a pretty good stunner as well, so I'll take that. Now, you want to make sure you're going to have three full fights inside this. Typically, you want to make sure you win the first two just to be able to get that done out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and do this with the Yama. Do this, and I want to do the Parasol the Now in the back as well. One Freezer, one big DPS, and have the Now just for the sake of... I think she's a healer. I don't actually remember. I didn't check her out, so... I also probably could have just focused on not getting destroyed there, but... Or, like, letting the first one go so I could have just, like, done better, but we'll... We'll deal. Oh, that's a big stun. Oh, man. Uh, I, I can't. Let me out. Let me out. Let me out. Alright, we'll do this. And here we go. I actually don't have my uh, roll set up, so I have to, like, tap it manually. That ain't too bad. I need to get out of here. Okay. Just don't get destroyed by him. Oh, damn. I lost the first one. GG. Uh, in that case, I want to go ahead and use this. Uh, I'm going to have the Rukia, and I'm going to have this uh, sleepy Aizen here as well. Neliel is pretty scary, though. Here, I have final damage up, so that shouldn't be too bad. Um, what I'm kind of feeling... We'll do that. I'm gonna awaken. So she is gonna be really scary, honestly. Uh, Neliel is a very stun-focused, uh, tanky character, of which is, like, very intimidating. And honestly, is kicking my ass so far. I don't really know how to effectively play as this Urahara, honestly. I don't really know, like, how to use his shield effectively to win these matches. But damn. I'm getting cruised on. And there we go. Oh, and this is typically what you'll experience in terms of, like, actual endgame combat as well. It's a lot of trying to plan around the enemy stuns and trying to avoid getting hit by certain things. Um, and that right there, basically... That's one of the other game modes as well. The thing is, 
these are two inside the current rotation. Uh, all throughout the mornings, typically, there's like 8 a.m. There's a different thing. Uh, 8.30 is a new thing that starts out, which is this. It's currently 8.47 a.m. for me. So it's currently peak duel. Then it comes up with like... Here, let me see if I can actually go check the time limited. Okay. So we have Minos Grande Hunt, Peak Duel, which is what we just tried. Soul Reaper Battle, of which is like a battle royale, go and fight everybody inside like a certain area. Um, we have Battle of Lost Noches, which is like a boss fight. So everyone queues up together in parties of three, and everyone tries to fight to kill the boss first. Whoever kills the boss first gets the best items, and everyone below, depending on how far you get inside the stages, gets a certain amount of items as well. Of which are very, very good, by the way. Um, Punishment Force Contest is a... Basically, there's certain characters that are boosted. You'll be able to get extra items off of that as well. Uh, and you get to grind up these talent pills here as well. It's asking you to try and be online for those times. So typically you have to try and play a lot of the mornings. We have Brawl Cross Server, which is like another Battle Royale game mode. And Inner Selection, which is a 1v1. Uh, basically, I'm on this side of the stage. You're on that one. I'm going to run straight at you. You're approaching me. We're going to battle it down, and that's about it. It's a very, like, one-to-one -one PvP active game mode, and stuns are the champion inside it. So, generally, the game does have a lot of interesting things to it. I think the actual variety is very, very good for what it has. Um, And yeah, it's very cool. For right now, though, I think I am going to try and kind of... I don't know if I'm going to continue playing on C, because honestly, these servers are mostly, like, dead at this point. I don't know how it's going to be on global, but I personally want to go and hop over there and kind of grind some stuff up over there when it comes out. I believe it drops officially very, very soon. So I'll have a video up when it first drops. Uh, I think it's in CBT right now, um, but I'm excited. Let me know if you guys are going to be hopping into this game and trying it out and kind of what you think of it. Uh, personally, I think that it has a lot of potential, but where it's sitting right now isn't the comfiest in the world. So we'll see. For now, though, thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now, everybody. And don't forget to hit that fancy old like button to let me know that you guys want to see more of Mobile 3D because we'll be playing some more. And God knows, I'll be posting it on YouTube. Thank you. I'll see you guys in the next one.